Hello. Um, if you missed the first part of this because I forgot to press record, you can watch the Monday, Wednesday um, section because I did record theirs. Um, how big is a kilogram? Well, a kilogram is about two pounds. So that's a kind of a hefty amount of mass when you think about weighing out stuff and doing experiments in the lab. So another common unit of mass is the gram. And we're going to talk more about this. But one of the neat features of the metric system is that we change the size of the unit by using prefixes. Kilo is a prefix that means 1,000. And so kilogram is 1,000 grams. Instead of doing ounces and pounds and tons or inches and feet and yards and miles with all these kind of funky numbers to relate them, I mean, does anybody know how many feet are in a mile? 5,280. Oh, that's really convenient. And there's 12 inches in a foot and three feet in a yard. You know, these all kind of came about haphazardly. The metric system is all based on factors of 10. We need different size units for measurement because we don't want to measure the length of my pen in miles. Right? That's not going to work very well. We'd rather use inches, right? So if we were measuring this in the metric system, we might use centimeters. We wouldn't want to use kilometers. But we need to have different size units so that we can match the unit to the size of the object that we're measuring. Um, a second, this is the same as the second we are accustomed to, measures a length of time or the duration of an, of an event. Um, they define second in a very particular way. Uh, the number, uh, amount of time for a specific number of radiation events of cesium-133. And then temperature. So Kelvin is the SI unit of temperature. Another metric unit is also the degree Celsius, and that's one that we will use most often. We need to talk about what exactly is temperature. Why does one object feel hot and another object feel cold? Ever thought about that? Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance. So we've talked about the particles in liquids and solids are moving, right? They're moving in gases too. They're vibrating. The more they're vibrating, the more thermal energy the substance has, the more kinetic energy the particles have, the higher the temperature. So temperature measures the amount of kinetic energy. Temperature allows us to predict the direction of thermal energy transfer. Thermal energy always goes from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. You can put um, a warm soda in a bucket of ice and the soda will get cold. The ice will slowly warm up. You can't put a soda in room temperature water and expect it to get cold suddenly and the water to get warm. It just doesn't work that way. Everything's going to go towards the same. So we, we observe that thermal energy is transferred from hot to cold objects. The, the Kelvin scale is related to the Fahrenheit and the Celsius scale. Fahrenheit is what we're familiar with. You know, when I've been saying, oh, it's 77.5 degrees in here, and I'm, this is too warm for me. That's degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit um, goes uh, with 32 degrees being the freezing point of water and 212 being the boiling point of water. There's some interesting history behind how those numbers came about, but those are random English unit type numbers. The Celsius scale is based on powers of 10, and so they made the freezing point of water zero and the boiling point 100, and then there's 100 divisions in between. There's 180 Fahrenheit degrees to 100 Celsius degrees. The only difference between the Celsius scale and the Kelvin scale is the zero point. Kelvin uses something called absolute zero as zero Kelvin. Absolute zero is the temperature at which the motion of particles would cease. So in a solid, the particles are not vibrating at all. They're just 
completely fixed. Scientists, of course, being curious and, and you know, wanting to try things. There's scientists out there spending their lives trying to get down to zero Kelvin. They haven't quite made it, but they've gotten really close. And we will stop there and pick up again on Thursday. <laughs>